Whatever. First degree, price discriminating, monopolist. What, that happens, what happens is you charge each consumer based on their reservation price, meaning there will be no consumer surplus whatsoever because you're charging the max they're willing to pay per individual person. Uh, there's two conditions for price, first degree, price discriminating monopolist, and it would be that marginal revenue is equal to the demand curve, and it's only for first degree price discrimination. Marginal revenue is equal to the demand curve, and to profit maximize, price is equal to marginal cost, just like in perfect competition. Okay, marginal revenue is equal to the demand curve. Marginal revenue is equal to the demand curve. And then, price is equal to marginal cost. I think in a way you could possibly draw everything the same line, I'm not sure if you can. I think you can. Marginal revenue is equal to the demand for our first degree of price discriminating monopolists. Uh, price is equal to marginal cost. Right. And we got conditions. So you have to charge your consumer their reservation price, kind of the maximum that each individual is willing to pay. You had to prevent resale. Uh, therefore, there's no consumer surplus. Uh, first degree price discrimin discrimination is very efficient. P equals MC. That's efficiency. Price equals marginal cost. Yep. But it's not very equitable. So our first degree price discriminating monopolist is based on reservation prices and stealing away all the consumer surplus. Second degree price discrimination is about quantity discounts. Buy one, get one free. Think of it as getting two items. Buy one, get one, and get two of them. That's second degree price discriminating. Okay, so. Let's see. We have leftovers, so we charge one price for one demand curve, another price for another demand curve. That's why you have, like, this price for now, 69, this will be cents. 69 cents for a banana, but then um, at 7 11, if we have to buy two, it's a dollar for two of them. And it looks something like this. We have a residual or a remaining demand curve. I'm not sure which one's a residual. Like this one, the inner one. That one. Hidden in there. That one right here. It's residual demand curve. Uh, you're going to keep doing this until marginal revenue equals price, I believe. Um, the price being charged is greater than marginal cost. That's what Jenny, Jenny's question was. Jenny asked a question during class, and this was the answer. She said, she said that um, the price being charged is greater than marginal cost. Marginal revenue, MC, might be the demand curve here, no. No, the price being charged up here will definitely be bigger than marginal cost for sure, because this is marginal cost, that straight line. And this is the price, so that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this until marginal revenue equals price, I guess. Here's the residual. Here's the regular demand curve. We had kept going. Maybe a price of 69 cents for a banana, but then later if you bought two of them, 50 cents each, checks down the price a bit. Because if you draw, yeah, if you have to draw a line going up, not from the marginal revenue curve, but from here, this demand curve, you would get another price. A uh, good question I could ask is, um, does the residual demand curve have a different marginal have a different marginal revenue curve that's a good question actually okay third degree price discrimination monopolists okay you charge different prices based on 
elasticity. Uh, what it means is you're going to group consumers into different groups and then you're going to charge them different amounts based on what group they belong to. Sometimes you can do gender discrimination, age discrimination, so called. Mm. Still same cost to produce her butt. Using third degree price discrimination. The price is still greater than marginal costs. I think the producer can still just keep doing that. Uh, okay, the smaller the elasticity, the greater the price. The more inelastic you are, the higher the price is going to go, clearly. Like here, you're very young folks, and more inelastic. More inelastic. Demand. For the younger folks. And the price just goes higher for the more inelastic things. For the older folks, when they have more elastic demand curve. This is marginal revenue, by the way. This one's marginal revenue. This one's demand. Okay. Because the closer the flatter it is to the MC curve, the lower the price will be. Makes sense. The smaller elasticity, the lower the price. I mean, the higher the price. This one has a higher price. This one hopefully has a lower price. The more elastic it is, the less the price. Look at the graphs. More elastic, more inelastic. Higher price for more inelastic. Lower price for more elastic. Okay, I'll stop there.